welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Pursuit of Perfection to start the day off on Meme Tier Monday. This is a perfect Meme Tier Monday deck. <laughs> Get it? Perfect? Okay. Anyway, uh, we're going to be playing 40 cards in our deck, and there are going to be 40 different cards. Each one we have as one of. We just got one of each card, and a uh, couple of reasons for that. One, that's really cool. Two, uh, we are able to play such a wide variety of stuff that like our hand's going to be completely different every game, and so that's going to be exciting. That like each game is going to be completely different, so that's exciting. Three, we'll be able to have like the answers to whatever our opponent needs because we're we're going to have so many different uh, cards that like whatever the situation, we'll have the perfect card for the situation, hopefully. And uh, four, we're doing it because of our namesake card in our deck. Um, I should have came up with another four, so I could have said this was five. That's what I'm going to do anyway. So five, we're playing this because of our namesake card in our deck, Pursuit of Perfection, uh, because we want to be able to play 20 cards with different names and then get a 30-30 Overwhelm Catastrophe. That's the goal of our deck get this pursuit of perfection so you can see that not only are we playing all cards with different names but most of these cards are able to create another card with a different name as well for example death ray makes has the mk1 but whenever it creates the mk2 and the mk3 those are cards with different names you have spacey sketcher of course that can invoke a celestial card that's a card with a different name spell thief We'll be able to grab something else. Ballistic Bot creates the Ignition. Zoe makes that super cool star chart that makes something else. Um, you know, Behold the Infinite makes something else. Iterative Improvement, we can pick a follower and then and cast that. It would have to be our opponent's follower, because if it's our follower, we already played it. But, you know, you get the idea. Yeah, you know, your Mountain Goat's creating a gem. Um, we have, of course, super cool star chart again. Trail of Evidence, Flash of Brilliance, your Invoke cards with Solari and Lunari Priestess. Chumpwump's making those mushroom clouds. You can you get you get the picture here. Heimerdinger makes all sorts of turrets. They'll all have different names. Your Victor is creating the hex core upgrade, and of course, getting all the bonuses from all the created cards. Plus, our deck's just filled with created cards. So once we played eight of them, now our Victor's leveled up, and then all those created cards start costing one less, which is a bonus. Um, you know, star shaping is making that uh, celestial card for us. Aurelian Soul bringing a bunch of Celestial cards, and of course Eclipse Dragon bringing a dragon and another Celestial follower as well. Um, so it should be pretty exciting. Uh, we got some other things that draw cards as well, so it should be a pretty exciting deck to play. should be a lot of fun. 40 different cards. We are going to have the Pursuit of Perfection. Let's go get it. So it's Meme Tier Monday. That means we're playing on over in Normal. So we're just going to play five games over there with our singleton deck. Um, looks like we're playing against this Zo Zoe Diana deck that's been getting pretty popular recently. They're gonna be all about invoke a whole lot of Targon in their deck. Um, let's see. Let's get rid of the Sunforger and the Starry Scamp. Um, they have a lot of good followers to iterative improvement also. But maybe I just mulligan that. So I want to try to find something to kind of deal with their, their Zoe to start with. Cool. Such as our Zoe. Our Zoe can... Awesome. It could block their Zoe. Yeah, question is why not three pursuits? Basically because it's, it's not easy to pull off a pursuit. And we don't want to have like multiple pursuits in our hand early. We want to be able to... Um, we do want to be able to Ooh, these are all good we do want to be able to actually achieve the pursuit of perfection of casting 20 different cards we only need we only need the one I don't know I like all of them I kind of like it like the moon silver reducing the cost of the progress day like, that sounds kind of cool. Or we could just go Messenger and draw another card. I can just do that. We'll just get Space Doggy. Vast 
Yeah, we're playing a singleton deck. Man, our deck is sweet, though. Like, every single card is good. This is going to be a really difficult deck to play, because it's not like you're just going to... We're going to sit here with, you know, like, two or three Solari Priestesses in hand and, like, makes our decision, like, really easy. It's like, every single every single turn, we're going to have, you know, so many different options. Like, so many iterations of, of cards that we can play each turn. This is not going to be an easy one to play. Um... Right, how am I stopping... I guess I'm not. I was, I was about to... I realized that... I, yeah, I can't stop Diana, actually. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. Find your own light within the darkness. Your light is a lie. I cannot turn back. Face your heretic. <clears throat> Diana's such a good card. Such an underrated card. That's one of our champions in here. I think Diana's such an underrated card. Oh, what's up, Victor? The only double... So, as far as double spell... Like, as far as double units, I can go bot and some treasure. Um, if I play if I play Traveler or Victor, I don't get another unit. But then I'd, I'd want to play, like... The, but the thing is, I want to play the some treasure afterwards to discard the ignition. I guess I'll just go Traveler. I've become who I was always meant to be. Let's get this thing. So I have 10 cards in hand? Uh, I guess I could have paid attention to that. Yeah, so I guess I gotta get rid of something. Sunlight guiding, my brethren. One, two, three, four, five, six. So my only two Celestials are these two in, in play, so if they have, like, for four mana, if they can fast speed, kill a 2-2 two -two and a 3-4, which I wouldn't really expect them to be able to do, but if they could do that, they would counter that. Alright, so that should make my life a little easier, just in general. No, not the Space Doggy. Don't kill my Space Doggy. They haven't even cast a spell yet this game, as far as Spell Thief is concerned. I don't know what happened to my voice there. <laughs> Alright, so I'm at six credit cards. Humanity is obsolete. Obsolete. Alright, so that was Daybreak, so the next Celestial or Dragon costs two less for them. I'm not sure if I want to play this Victor yet. I kind of want to wait till Victor is leveled up before I play it. <laughs> yeah, dude, our deck is sweet. Delirious says, I bet lost, but somehow this chaotic deck might win. Yeah, our, our deck has a lot going for it. <laughs> Burn. Our deck's pretty sweet. Got me 
All right, so I did that to turn on the Nightfall for the Dragon, but then I realized, wait, if we do Nightfall Dragon, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so that would be eight, nine. Because, yeah, that'd be kind of be too many cards in hand. Where are you at? You're still at six. Hopefully we get to keep this victor alive. Cool. So that's seven out of eight. Stories of coils encircling the world. This is number eight. What we got? Fearsome. That's not so good. If I attack out with everything, then we'll be able to gain some room to be able to go, like, chump lump some treasure. I, obviously not the victor. I meant everything else. Um, the ballistic bot, I don't really need to attack with either, I suppose. These other things are whatever. You cannot sway me. Not stray. All right, so we only got one thing to die. Or no, no, we got two things to die. Okay, never mind. Yeah, two things to die. So yeah, I got room for some treasure and chump lump. No, don't use a hush. No. That's not cool. All right, so I could take their falling comment. This, this thing costs a mana again now. We want with this spell thief, we could take Fallen Comet. Well, that's too bad. I liked that victor. I liked my created cards costing one less. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty sparkle fly. So think about thermogenic beaming this mountain scryer. No, I should probably wait on that. Yeah, I should probably wait on that. All right, one. So this is three, six in hand. Chump up makes two more. Seven, eight. Bot makes another one. Nine, and then draw a card for turn ten. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rummage away the two mushroom clouds. One, two, three. Okay, so if I if I play Eclipse Dragon, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I do have room for both of them. It's hard hard for me to, to count with the cameras kind of in the way. All right, that's kind of cheating. Guys descend. That's kind of cheating. No more lies. I 
Well, I was feeling good about this until that card. So I can make better blocks. And obviously I, have, I can still play more cards, but they're passing with all this mana. I think I just kind of have to pass also, because I can, I can stay alive from, you know, just this stuff. Right here, right now. I don't think I can really risk, like, spending another two mana on, like, you know, a Trail of Evidence or a Super Cool Star Chart or whatever, and then they have, like, all ten of their mana, then they, then they start playing, like, more, more, like, removal and more things and all that kind of stuff with ten mana. Her light is our sword, her warmth our armor. So I'm probably going to discard the progress date of the Spacey Sketcher. Okay, so that, that Skies of Descend costs 15. So right now it costs 13. Okay. I'm just kind of doing a little, little quick math there. Hmm. I was hoping for Crescent Strike to double stun the five fours. Oh, the dragon's celestial also. You're right. or yeah, it counts dragons and celestials. I, I was thinking just the celestials. It would have cost eleven. So yeah, I could have I could have taken it and cast it right there. My bad. I forgot about the dragon part. Yeah. See, like, why didn't they play that like with their ten mana instead of just passing like last turn? Oh, they had that in their hand last turn. Why'd they just waste all that mana last turn? I don't know, but I'm not too mad at it, I suppose. I don't know. Will I actually be able to get to this progress day? Maybe. Shape the skies and mold the earth. Hmm. I may actually be able to play that progress day. Yeah, what's in their hand? I don't know. Maybe, like, more Skies Descend, honestly. Like, that that could be their hand is just more Skies Descend. I'm not sure. Imminently logical. Yeah, it's just more skies to send. Alright, Skies Descend or Star Shaping? Because I, I do have this Cosmic Rays, which is kind of Skies Descend. I think I'm just take this Star Shaping. Am I going to want to play Progress Day? Like, what am I really hushing on their side? I guess Zoe. So these turrets having a lot more power does level up our Heimerdinger a lot faster. Yeah, maybe it was Sunburst. Maybe I should have discarded Sunburst, actually, and kept the progress day. Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, maybe it was Sunburst. Huh. I guess I could hush that thing. Thanks, it comes to the 
Let's go, Heimer, level up. That Bastion to save the Heimer was perfect. From there, Skies Descend. Yeah, I, w I wish I would have gotten rid of the Sunburst, though. This is difficult. Which one to take? All three of these are great options. Yeah, like, I could, I could definitely see doing another Cosmic Inspiration. Um, the, yeah, the Supernova gets rid of this Scourge, though. But then, like, the Destroyer, like, they have to, like, the Destroyer, like, they have to block with the Scourge anyway. And we deal damage to them. So I think it actually just makes sense to take the Destroyer. Because, yeah, this is going to be a 17-9. And I guess I just play that right now. I could challenge their Scourge and make it so they... Yeah, I guess I could just challenge and then they're kind of dead if I challenge the Scourge. That's true, Nova would also create a T-Hex besides getting rid of this. Hmm. It's rude. Alright, so Sunburst makes the elusive, the 6-1 elusive. Or 7-2 seven, seven elusive. Nine four elusive, dang. <laughs> this is never mind. This just keeps getting bigger and bigger. By right, the second. One star's whoopsie is another spark. Okay, how scared should I be of that card? Do I need to immediately attack with a seventeen nine? So if they if it's the stun card, they can't have like hush plus stun, like the three mana stun. They can't really do anything. They can't do like hush plus stun. You know, it could be like Equinox. They could hush plus Equinox the Destroyer, but then I, then they'd take nine. Because if, if I do this, they go down to one, right? If I attack here, I think I can play this first though. The only way, out of these things, the only thing that blocks and kills Heimerdinger is the 14-4, and that 14-4 is, like, the only thing that can kill me, so... They could, like, have Hush, then block with 5-4 on Heimer. But then if they, if they Hush the Heimer, then they're taking a ton of other damage. All right, so that's their second and third hush. But then they're still just taking all that. <laughs> yeah. Truly remarkable. Truly remarkable. Thirty minutes. All right, now we're playing against the no champion burn deck. So we got six champions. Against zero. So, like, there's no way we can lose, right? We have six champions. They have zero. How could we lose? It just wouldn't even make sense. How can zero champions beat six? Yeah, I know. Yeah, we did just beat a yeah, we beat a, a tier one deck for sure. Yeah, I tell you, y'all, our deck is sweet. It's 
people under underestimate the power of one ofs. Having just having so many choices is really powerful. Let's make it deep. I would like to wait till next turn to play the Trail of Evidence to turn on the Nightfall for my Lunari Priestess. That's what I would like. I'll try anyone. I'm probably not going to cast this Sun Blessed Vigor right now. You were misguided. I just take one instead of taking two by blocking that thing. Look what you did. Okay. I still take one, but they just keep this thing alive. Like that—that that just wasn't even a good transfusion. So now, instead of having like the the two one Crimson Disciple in play, now they have the three two used Cast Salesman. I have my orders. They're both kind of the same card. It's not worth using a transfusion to get basically the same card in play. Not much of an upgrade. Shining gifts from the sky. First one's free. Channel our power. Maybe you need a closer look. War Mason, reporting for duty. The few. Okay, sixteen. No one's the wiser. What once was two, now is one. I can do this. And we'll have uh, we'll have some blessed figure be able to protect my golden sister. Insolence. Warning, take you. All right, so I go down to ten. That sounds reasonable. Time to go. Yeah, we don't have a static shock in the deck. This this would have been a great matchup for static shock. Flash of Brilliance. Oh, man, really? I wanted to play Eclipse Dragon, but obviously I can't even play Eclipse Dragon anymore because I just have to play this thing. Well, that's too bad. Sorry, Eclipse Dragon. Because we have to completely wreck their board instead. Keeping some less vigor available instead of playing the 1-3, just in case. I just want to protect my 4-2 lifesteal. <laughs> Poor opponent. I mean, they just, had, they just had no chance. I have six champions and they have zero. I didn't cast any of my champions. I don't didn't draw draw or cast any of my champions. But... Do I need to do it? Alright, so Lulu Shen. Yeah, that that was a burn deck. That, that was supposed to be yeah, that was supposed to be a, a real aggressive burn deck. Alright, what do I want against Lulu Shen? I'm sorry, Pursuit. You're just always gonna get mulligan. You're you're a great card, but you're gonna be our late game card. I don't know if I want Death Ray or not. That's the one. I, I'll keep Mystic Shot and Trail of Evidence. I'm not sure about Death Ray. 
Let's just keep it. Death Ray can blow up a barrier, which could be important. so. And I'm going to wait for next turn for the Trail of Evidence for the Lunari Priestess. Hmm. I guess I could play Diana instead of Lunari Priestess. Um, so Diana would deal two to Lulu, not killing Lulu, but then would kill Diana. Probably just go the Priestess. Calm mind and open heart greet the night. Hearts unshackled. This wasn't a very good turn for me. That turn three. I walked this space between worlds. And didn't necessarily get better. I think I'm still like a yodel in uniform. Enforced equilibrium. I uh, so I should be drawing the MK2 this turn. Gentle light. No more lies. Face your heretic. My duty is done. Okay, I can take Repost. Repost could help me take down Lulu. Just block like that, and no, I don't. I don't need you. You can, you can block. I want to see what they what they do here. Okay, so yeah, they have another repost. Our wills align. All right, well, let's definitely grab our repost. By our repost, I mean you know, you know what I mean. Their repost. Let's do that. Let's get Shen out of here. And now we'll have the MK3 on top, one of the first couple of cards that we'll be able to take down Lulu. At least help with it, but Shen's really good. And so getting Shen out of here, I'm very happy with. Do I get to Cosmic Inspiration? Yes, I do. I have the Equinox for that. I don't have... I mean, Cosmic Inspiration is just the best card. Like, I could take Golden Sister because we need bodies. Because Golden Sister has bodies. But Cosmic Inspiration is the best card. So what do we do? Do we take the better card or bodies? This is a tough choice. It depends if we're going to draw bodies or not. All right, let's let's take cosmic. Let's let's try to draw bodies. The balance requires a watchful eye. All right, so that's uh, you know very bad for me. Another Shen, because Shen's awesome.
Perfect draw. Perfect draw. Come on, Adam. I guess there they could be a deny deck also, so that would be like a bad reason to take cosmic inspiration because of deny. But yeah, this went them having another Lulu and another Shen. This went poorly. The music is is by the board. Each board has different music. Get him, Picks. Vi stands for violence. Justice first hand. Trouble coming at ya. The safer play would be to go for the young witch, I guess. But Chen's just so much better. Balance favors you. That's why this was not the safer play. <laughs> I was really hoping they didn't have another barrier card. Good draw. We've had a couple of good draws here these last couple turns. Rummage, Zonid Urchin, Hush. Vroom, vroom. Samson imbalance. Okay, so I could do nothing. Basically, if this if this last card's another barrier card, they can kill me with the Shen if I cast the Hush. I am maybe having lethal. If I if I don't play anything, this is not lethal. Right? Because they're only... But I could... I mean, I, th I think I gotta play it, though, but... This is risky. You would hush to say Vi? Instead of killing Lulu? Okay, down to one. I guess we could, we, we couldn't save Vi anyway, because the hush. Yeah, we wouldn't we wouldn't save Vi anyway with the hush, because they would just have, they had the resonating strike. So I would hush, and then they would resonating strike, and they'd still kill Vi. So yeah, definitely worth killing the Lulu. Regeneration. Within the flows of magic. Off we go. Slow down. Come on, really? Right after I get rid of the card to block an elusive. Man, close game. Right after I discard, like they were just holding that perfectly, waiting for me to discard that card that blocked an elusive. Man, that was perfect. And that was looking good for us, but then they had, you know, they had the second Shen, second Lulu. Um, yeah, just a little bit too much. 
and killed us. They were so close to stabilizing. Yeah, like, one's, like, star shaping, right? Like, one star shaping, I think that we win that. Alright, so anyway, Heimer, Lux. This is going to be a slower game. Um, all these cards are very good in a slower game. The Bastion is the one that, like, you can maybe get rid of out of these. That's probably the, the least valuable. Yeah, this is not going to be an easy one to win. Both Heimerdinger and Lux are champions that can really take over. And um, this is going to be a hard-fought game like the first game. Like, this is like a Remembrance turn. Or Illegal Contraption. Let's do it over there. Like, if I played it on turn two, they'd be able to Mystic Shot. I guess I can just cast Super Cool Star Chart. I'll probably, I guess I don't need to Spacey Sketcher it. Right now, do I? Let's see. Because I cast it. And then I still have my three spell mana. So I want Equinox to be able to stop the 3 2 Challenger, the Mage Seeker, um, Persuader. There it is. The Mage Seeker Persuader. The problem is now I don't get to get any value out of my Solari Priestess, and so now I just don't really have a very good turn. My cause is righteous. With the rest of my mana. I could play the Spacey Sketcher, but none of these are really that great to discard. And I, I like having the Bastion available to protect... My Zoe. Yeah, kind of means I don't get to do anything else. So yeah, I could I could play the Star Shaping and then I just don't have Bastion to protect Zoe anymore. Yeah, that's probably reasonable. Because I think I'm going to have to play Vi next turn, maybe for Heimerdinger. And so I wouldn't really have Bastion available next turn anyway. So it's probably better than just wasting all this mana. But Zoe's going to die. And Zoe dying is not great. For obvious reasons. But it's gonna happen. Vi stands for vicious. Best case scenario would be me pass, they play Heimerdinger, then I play Vi, right? Like, that'd be, like, the best case scenario. But, like, if I pass, they pass, right? Like, if I'm them, and if I pass to them, like, there's no way I play anything. I just go, I have a 5-5, five -five and I, you know, 5-5 five -five against nothing. Like, there's no way that they should play anything. Will you comply, or are you complicit? Six. What seems to be the problem? Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. I was hoping for the obliterate card, of course. Put an end to magic. Hope this works. I 
Because I just have to use any spell to stop this Bastion spell shield. Just not a good chance that this works out for me. They keep on having, like, everything that I don't want them to have every turn <laughs> for their deck. Yeah, so see, like, the, the Bastion wouldn't have worked. They got rid of a Mage Seeker uh, Investigator for that. Okay, we're at 8 for this Subpercible. Um, so I'm, I'm obviously playing the Spacey Sketcher this turn. I'm going to discard the Super Cool Star Chart, try to get an Invoke card that costs 2 or less to be able to play also. I could see discarding the Sump Dread. No, because I, I need bodies now. Like, this Heimer, Heimer's going to just take over. I really need bodies. Um... I mean, I guess I could discard, like, the Warrior. Maybe I do that, actually, discard the Warrior, because then I'm going to be playing... Because, like, next turn I'm going to be playing... Super but the thing is, the Warrior challenges the Heimer. I could discard the Bastion. Like, next turn I'm going to double spell. I'm going to play Sump Dredger plus one of the five drops. So I guess, so I guess it is the super cool star chart. Not a bad draw. So I could now do I could do a five drop plus get excited instead. Seek and silence. Oh, you're interesting. Can't really go to two, can I? No, it's not Repose, it's it's burn spells. Like right like we already seen like they have they play burn spells. Like they've they've already played Mystic Shock, get excited. Like that's that's what it's gonna kill me is is burn spells. And so I kinda have to get excited one of these things, but I also can't. So I think I I think I just can't. I think if they just have burn spells, I die, I guess. My plan this turn is to play Get Excited and the Warrior. Hmm. Yeah, they also can just have that. They just kept on having, like, the perfect card for each, like, turn, each scenario. They basically did what our deck is trying to do against us. They just always had, like, you know, they had just... They never played two of the same card, right? Like, they always just had exactly, like, a, a great card for each scenario. And then they had Heimerdinger, which is just an amazing card. So, basically exactly what I'm trying to do with my deck. They did it against us. Omen Hawk. So obviously Sunburst is, is great here. It's great against both champions. Um, so Percival, like, I kept some Percival last game. I was never able to play it. Hopefully I'm able to play it this time. I am superior life form. Uh, this is the schedule for the decks today. Gamer, uh, we're we're playing these these four decks here. These were all uh, donation decks. We're going to be playing a Vaults of Helia Captain Farron deck up next, and then a Spectral Matron Cadrogen deck after that, and then Twisted Fate Sejuani after that. These old eyes still see far. We're playing five games with each deck, so this is the last game for this deck. Sure. We got a uh, four mana, spend two cards, draw three. Warms the heart. 
Okay, we got two really good cards against their champions now. One Sunburst, one Falling Comet. Up to three for Sun per Sub Percival. I should probably just be mulliganing Sub Percival after playing these two games. At seven for some Percival. Love to have another cosmic inspiration. Alright, so Sunburst or Fallen Comet. It basically depends like with Harrowing and uh, Rekindler, that kind of stuff. I'll just go ahead and Fallen Comet. Um, Trindamir doesn't really work that well with Harrowing. Because like it stays... Oh. Well, that's nice. For them. Yeah, that's kind of nice for them. Anyway, I was trying to say that Trindamir will stay ephemeral. Even when it levels up, it'll, like the other side will be ephemeral also. So I didn't want Rekindler to... Put back another Anivia. So they have Vengeance, I have Bastion. That of course only does two damage. I can just heal that two damage right back with the Guiding Touch. So I don't know exactly what they were trying to accomplish with that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four, eight, ten. One swing, a bunch of targets. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do not have a good record against um, Spooky and Nivea, that's for sure. This one looks to be a little different. Alright, cool, I'm at 12 out of 20 for Pursuit. Maybe we can actually get a Pursuit game this this time. That would be quite nice. Um, right. So, Trindamir or... We, we can kill one of them. Trindamir or Anivia. I can kill one with the Sunburst. I guess it's got to be Trindamir being all overwhelming stuff. I guess that's the scarier one. The Anivia I can just kind of block, I guess. Endless cold, endless peace. Calm mind and open heart, greet the night. 
Okay, so they got leveled up in India now. So we're at 15. So we'll have Diana kill the, the O1, and then have Vi just hit them for 11. Put them down to 7. This would come back as just a regular Anivia. It wouldn't be like the plus, you know, because it died. It wouldn't get all the, the bonus from the Field of Rush anymore. That was a lot of champions leveling up this turn. Three three different champions leveled up this turn. Anivia, and then of course, Vi and Diana. Ledros. Okay, so I'm at 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so yeah, we can play this 30, 30 this turn. So let's go, let's go this. Let's rummage away. These, this one and this one. I'm not playing those two cards. I guess I could go for. I mean, I could go for lethal of just like burn spells, but that's not as cool. I actually wanted the the plus zero plus two and like I think I want the, the plus zero plus two spell shield to be able to protect my catastrophe. All right, here we go. Let's pursue some perfection. Oh, that's true. I'm not playing around atrocity at all, am I? Oh, yeah, I guess I didn't play around Atrocity, did I? Any way for me to play around Atrocity now? No, probably not, because this is all slow, slow, slow. I just wanted to, to pursue perfection. I just wanted to do that. Man, that will be so sad if they have Atrocity. Please don't have Atrocity. Was there something I could have taken with Spacey Sketcher that would have? I mean... Obviously, like, the way... Yeah, so I just died. The way for me to play around Atrocity would have been just, like, cast, like, these, you know, targeting... And just, you know, get the get the power down on this thing so that a Mystic Shot would have killed it. And so not playing the, that Catastrophe. That, that's really disappointing. I will not abandon yeah, I just didn't think of Atrocity. I could, I could have played around Atrocity. And I'm sorry. That's really disappointing. I just wanted, you know, I just got, I just got caught up in our deck of doing the pursuit of perfection. I just got caught up in that, and wanted to do that instead of wanted to, uh, you know, do the best play of winning the game. So three super disappointing games. Our last three. Um, yeah, I, I, I liked our deck a whole lot, and I think our deck was really good. It just, you know, I just ended up losing those last three games, and they, they weren't really. I mean, that's the thing. Whenever you have, like, this kind of singleton deck, you have an incredible amount of choices of what to do every single turn. And so a lot of times, if you're not going to win with this deck, a lot of the times that there, there's just different decisions that I could have been making in those games that, you know, could have took me into... Uh, uh, to, to have me a better chance to win. So it's, it's the kind of deck that it... Um, you know, whenever you make the right decisions, it's going to feel really good. Sometimes you make the wrong decisions, like that last game, and it'll feel really bad. Um, but the the games are in your hands. But I think this is a, a really good deck. We played against a bunch of very good decks, and and um, you know, all, basically all those games those games were all winnable. Um, we we achieved 
the we pursued perfection and we achieved it, but it cost us everything <laughs> in order to do it. I I honestly think that this deck could be good enough for ranked. It felt like that. It felt like this is like a deck that that would be just fine in masters rank. I know I went two and three in normal, but it um yeah it felt it felt really good. <laughs> the, lots of decisions here. Um, yeah, this this deck actually felt like it was pretty real. The progress it seemed like we had a ton of card advantage, so like the progress day was kind of difficult to cast. It seemed like it could use like another removal spell, but that's you know that's hard to fit in because. <laughs> Uh, I don't, yeah, so I don't know. It was good. Like this, this deck was good. I liked it. I liked it quite a bit. I think that this was a, a really solid deck. <clears throat> yeah, if there's yeah singleton gauntlets, yeah, we would definitely wreck singleton gauntlets for sure. Like as as far as like yeah, the, there's singleton gauntlets. This um, I can't really imagine a better singleton gauntlet deck than this one. All right, but anyway, that's the Pursuit of Perfection. Pretty awesome. I guess we should get out of here because this is an hour and 30 minute video. <laughs> we should probably get to the next deck. Uh, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Leave those comments. Uh, you know, Let me know what you think of the deck and you know, feel free to try this in rank and everything too and, and let me know how it goes. Let me know. Uh, you know give, give me that feedback. Do you think this deck is strong enough for rank as well like how I was thinking? Uh, let me know. All right, but that's all I got here for Pursuit of Perfection. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.